This is the Samsung Galaxy S25 Edge, the thinnest device that Samsung has released to this day. So I'm gonna do a complete teardown of this device, look inside and see what is different compared to the other type of Samsung Galaxy S series. I heated the device for one minute, 1100 Fahrenheit and air output 50%. And I used the suction cup in order to create a small opening between the back glass and the frame of the device. Right after that, I inserted a guitar pick and then started detaching the bottom portion of the back glass from the body of the device. So at this step, I will continue with the guitar pick in order to detach the back glass completely out of this device. Creating a gap between the back glass and the frame of the device was relatively easy, same as the other Samsung S series, but it was a little bit more difficult to do this simply because the double sided tape that Samsung used for the Galaxy S25 Edge is different than the one that they use for the other Samsung S series. Here the double sided tape that they used is extremely similar to the one that Apple used on their devices. You can see this type of double sided tape tend to leave stains where it was. You can see it all around the device. I removed all the screws that were visible on the device especially the ones on top of the smartphone. Here I'm removing the wireless charger. You will have to detach it from the loudspeaker at the bottom of the device. And then right after that, you need to disconnect the cable going to the motherboard. Then you can completely remove the wireless charger out of this device. This one in yellow is the battery cable. You will need to remove the battery cable before you proceed in the removal of any other things inside this device. Right after that, I needed to remove the screws at the bottom of the device on top of the loudspeaker. Next, I removed the loudspeaker which had the haptic feedback engine or the vibrating motor. In the other S-series Samsung phones, they combined the loudspeaker and the vibrating motor all together in one unit. Here, they had to split in two due to lack of space. Next, I removed the 5G antenna located at the top right of this Galaxy S25 Edge. Similar to the other newer Samsung Galaxy devices, S24 and S25, you have only one 5G antenna inside the device. The next step is the removal of the speaker, the front speaker. Right after that, you need to pry out the front speaker and you can remove it completely out of the device. Now I can start disconnecting all the cables that are connected to the motherboard on the top and disconnect the same cables if possible at the bottom of the device. At the bottom, I'm going to disconnect the cable that splits in two and also the single cable on the right side of the device. So here the cable that splits in two is a new cable. I have seen this one on the Note 20 Ultra and I think the S20 Ultra. Apart from those, they have not been using this type of cable design since then. So with this one, space is an issue. So they had to do something in order to make everything fit. So they used this cable, split both the USB-C port and also the other one going to the charging module. So right now everything has been removed and I can start working on the battery. Everything that were on top of the battery or obstructing the battery removal have been removed. So the first thing is to undo all the plastics that are covering the battery itself. Right after that, you will be able to remove the battery very easily. So here it is exactly the same thing on the other Galaxy S25s. This is the new design for the battery on a Samsung device going forward. This is making the battery removal process very easy without doing any extra stuff. You simply need to undo all the plastics that are on top of the battery and then you can take the battery out similar to opening a box and taking the content from the box. This battery design was implemented on the Galaxy S25 series. The previous devices, the S24, didn't have this design of battery installation and removal. Here is the battery for the Galaxy S25 Edge. As you can see, the battery is super thin compared to the side of the device. The device itself is the thinnest and the battery sidewall also is the thinnest. You can see the battery side by side with the side of the S25 Edge. You can see moving forward, if they have to make this device thinner than this, they will need to make the battery thinner or move with a silicon carbon battery, which can be thinner than this, but retain more energy. The next thing that I'm removing is the SIM card tray. After removing that, I can remove the charging module, which has the SIM card reader attached to it. Simply pry out the charging module and you will see it will start moving, but you will have to disconnect 
or undo this side of the charging module which is connected by a small flex cable. Again this goes back to the loudspeaker having the haptic feedback out of the loudspeaker. So this is why you have this small part of the PCB board out and disconnected from the charging module unit in order to control the vibration of the device. Here's the SIM card tray reader attached to the charging module. This is usually how Samsung does it. Everything in one unit. The only cable left on the bottom of the device is the cable for the screen. It cannot be removed, so it has to stay this way. I disconnected the cable for the front facing camera. Right after that, I can start prying out the motherboard and remove it completely out of the frame of this S25 Edge. Here's the motherboard for the Galaxy S25 Edge and I was surprised to see thermal paste on the back of the motherboard. Usually Samsung does not use thermal paste on their smartphones, but with this one, since the device is so thin and thermal management is critical for the performance of this Galaxy S25 Edge, I believe they had to use thermal paste in order to make sure everything will go as planned. The cameras for the Galaxy S25 Edge are attached by flex cable. You simply need to disconnect each camera flex cable from the motherboard in order to remove the camera module block. So now the next step in order to replace one camera will be the removal of the ultra wide. The ultra wide is the smallest camera that one can be removed. So if you need to replace your main camera, the big camera, you will need to buy a camera block with the big camera already attached to it without the ultra wide camera and then transfer your ultra wide from the old camera block onto the new camera block. If you need a new ultra wide, it is very easy. You simply need to hit the back of the ultra wide and pry it out then do the installation of the new ultra wide in the place of the old ultra wide camera trying to remove the main camera out of this camera block or the camera frame is going to damage the main camera most likely for reinstallation simply align the camera block with the motherboard and connect the flex cables for the camera onto the motherboard make sure that you do not touch the camera lenses to avoid leaving fingerprint on your camera lenses I have done a very good video on the Galaxy S22 Ultra dismantling all four cameras, removing the cameras one by one and I posted that video. That's the best video in order to know how to disassemble any camera on a fused camera block. So right now it is the reinstallation of all the parts that I removed out of this Galaxy S25 Edge and then I'm gonna turn the device on and see if everything is alright. For the reinstallation, it is pretty easy. You will need to do, redo everything in the reverse order. One thing that I forgot was to attach the last cable. So make sure that you attach all the cables or connect all the cables before you place back the plastic covering all the flex cables. Next, at the top of the device, you will need to install the 5G antenna followed by the speaker, the front speaker, and then you can start the installation of the battery. This way of removing the battery is the easiest that they could have done. I went back and reattached the cable that was missing. Then after that, I put everything back together. So right now I'm testing the device in order to make sure that it is working before I seal the back of the device completely. The first thing that I removed, the wireless charger, is the last component to be reinstalled on this Galaxy S25 Edge. The next step was the addition of all the screws on this Galaxy S25 Edge. And then right after that, I blew some air on the camera modules in order to make sure that there is no dust on any of the camera modules. Here's the aftermarket pack glass that I purchased for this Galaxy S25 Edge and I did select silver. This one is kind of a gold-like color but it was silver on the website. This is the reason why I do not put links to some of this part under the video because the part itself is simply bad. This part is not silver, it doesn't look like the original silver that was on the device and it doesn't look really really good. I'm not really sure why but these aftermarket sellers have become very lazy in providing the part with at least the minimum amount of quality. The parts comes with different colors than what they were supposed to be. The colors are never the same one to one. I'm not really sure why. In the past with the other Samsung Galaxy devices, I was able to get aftermarket part with the same color as the original. I do not understand why now with advancements of technology, 
these guys are providing parts that are not one to one the same color there is a self repair service on samsung's website at least here in the us i can get original parts on samsung website in order to repair the devices you can do the same or you can check iFixit for other parts.